All right, welcome to Talking Gourds. This is our monthly event in which we have open readings in which people who bring poems, nobody here today, but people who bring poems get to read and then we have a featured reader. Actually, I, that's not true. We have, a, we have a good person in the audience who's going to read to us and we're excited about it. We're also gonna, we ha our, our featured reader, Jack Mueller, who is an amazing character. Jack lives up in Log Hill Village and was a, a habitois of uh, North Beach, hung out with Ginsburg and Ferlinghetti and all those characters, was the head of the World Poetry Association and um, uh, just an amazing character who's hiding out in Log Hill Village in Ridgeway these days, uh, is sick, so he's not gonna be able to join us. Uh, if, if you're ever at a poetry reading and you see Jack in the audience, just know that you're going to be heckled. That's one of, uh, of Jack's trademarks, is he likes to heckle people. Mm -hmm. And he does it very kindly, but if you take offense, then it kind of looks sad. If you play with him, it's really fun. So uh, I, he, he read at the Carbondale Poetry Festival we had this past weekend, and I got to heckle him, because when he came up, then that was open season on him. So <laughs> we had a good time doing that. Um, well, Rosemary, why don't you come on up here and tell us who is our first uh, person that's going to subject themselves to the camera? First tonight we have Ruth, all the way from, where are you, in Natarita? Nukla. Nukla? Nukla, Norwood. They have two houses. They're, they're you know, they go Second back and forth. Owners. Yes. Yeah. They, they go from the, the, the right wing to the left wing, back and forth. <laughs> come on, Ruth, come on up here now. And we're very happy Ruth is a marvelous poet. Please give her a warm welcome. If you heckle me, I will cry. Uh, I know, I know. I'm, I'm not Jack, it's Jack, I promise, no heckling. I seem to write um, a lot of poems about comings and goings. Mm. So here are two. Again you go. And so we come to yet another sad song. A bite of lime, a trumpet calling the thin afternoon. Casually depart then, rally a sky bereft of blue, but blue within. Pack dancing skirts, some laughter, a muted reply. Take the willow leaves, shadowing the window. Take another breath, lacing a space between. You go, I know, without quest, destination, specific. You go without rumor or delay. Someone waits, someone holds. Mm -hmm. um, this next poem was written in early March before the sudden thrill of spring. <laughs> Colors effervescent in the reluctant afternoon. It should be gray. Why not? The suffocating clouds are low enough. Season, waxing winter. Crocus, still in their graves. Frenetic, stabbing snow. The world is an old black and white set. A 50s sitcom that isn't even funny. It's dumb. So where are you this afternoon? Trimming last year's growth? Stubbing probabilities? Persistent in the belief of yet another gold-drenched summer? So be it. The fruit is in the mind. I continue to stare at the pulsing screen and exercise in pointlessness. I cannot locate the palate, stubborn dog that I am. But here come the deer, tiptoeing across the frozen lawn, shades of milk and brown, their shy eyes mirroring yours. Their sense is reproductive, the budding drone of generations. I'm thinking of a deeper pink your sturdy upper lip, red line, concentration. I'm picturing your toes, long and wan and restless. There's a purple vein running, yellow moons of nail, 
your flat-footed solidity. I hear you whistling, blue rings and green water. The bland day is melting with the azure certain sound of your return. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. And next, no, thank, thank heavens it is getting colorful though, isn't it? It's getting so nice out. <laughs> the whole spring thing, my yard is green, yesterday white and green. <laughs> um, Alyssa is next, here from the library. As library staff, we're obligated to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick and tired of everybody having the blues. The weary blues, the lovesick blues, the downhearted, down in the dumps, down and out kind of blues. But not today. Today, I have the yellows. <laughs> the all-powerful, unstoppable, happy-go-lucky yellows. Like go bananas yellows. The we all live in a yellow submarine, say cheese, shit eating grin kind of yellows. So I bellow with somebody so happy, with the audacity of somebody so happy, I may actually be invincible. Woke up in a lemon tree feeling fresh. Citrusy sensations bringing zest to my flesh. Alive, revitalized. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. I hold that one thought in my head and obey. Why wade through a past of unchangeable moments? For this moment is a many-hued affair. It's electric. Go ahead, choose its hue if you dare. This moment's so hot you could fry an egg. So I crack it open, let its yolk run through my head. There is a reason it is called a golden opportunity. And I must be butter, cause I'm on a roll. <laughs> Fluorescent, iridescent, don't wear sunblock on your soul. Life is sensory, yet senselessly, we forget to take it all in. So today I'm tapping into enhanced senses, basking in the sun stain. Don't need HD when you got your brain. My energy flows like fireflies on the toes of a songbird that hits the ha-has and low-lows, skating on moonbeams as I dive into my own stream of conscious. So much of what we do is unconscious, but not today, because today I have the yellows. <laughs> the unstoppable, all-powerful, happy-go-lucky yellows. The let go bananas yellows. The we all live in a yellow submarine. Say cheese, shit-eating grin kind of yellows. So today, I'll decide what to be consciously. Let me be a dandelion, petals to the sun. Or a dandelion, mane as big as they come. Or the sandy lion, time stops for no one. Let me be a golden autumn leaf rustling in the wind. When it's time, I'll fall off, drift down into new things, changing on the tips of each year's fresh wings. Let me be the honey of a humble bumblebee, sweet curiosity seeping through me. Let me be sun hitting raindrops casts rainbows, sky's smile meeting sky's tears, nature's kaleidoscope. Life has many shades. Let me be the canary in my own mind's mind, let me be a candle in the dark. I'll handle my own spark. And each night I'll embark on a new journey. Dreams are just reality remixed. And you know what they say, it's better to, fit, it's better to burn out than just fade away. Why assimilate when you can incinerate? So let me be the sunset, blazing fiery, flashy. So electrifying I forget the shadows in my past. And let me be the sunrise as I wake to make my future of the colors that I cast. All right. Well, anybody else want to come up and share a poem? David Oyster, you just came in. Did you bring something to read? I did. No. Oh, yeah. Well, I tell you, Art, Art and I had this plan since Jack wasn't here. We were going to have kind of a, we had two ideas. One was we're going to have a big open circle and everybody could go around and around and read and read. 
But since it doesn't seem like a lot of people have stuff, um, we probably won't do that. The other plan we had was to kind of workshop everybody's stuff and do a lot of performance play and see what we could do, ensemble work. But I think um, we're going to, I think Art and I are going to play a little bit. We'll get up and uh, both of us have been performing quite a few years and we both have a lot of stuff just hanging out in our heads, so architect. No, all right. Hey. You want to do that one together? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's start with that. So we have one. This is a poem. Um, we're gonna, we, we, we've been performing in the past with Ellie Metric as ear, Ellie, Art, and Rosemary. Um, and uh, So we're going to do one here together. It's called Siempre Contando. And it's, from, uh, it's for Ernesto Cardinal. How many folks know his work? Not too many people. He's a really amazing poet from uh, Nicaragua. He was Minister of uh, Culture in uh, the Sandinista um, government for many years. Yo ando siempre contando. Make me a god of flowers and shrooms. Yo ando siempre Strong contando. man, story man. Siempre the contando. asphalt's thick with dead oil. I try to walk the edges, keep distance to heart, and let the head dance on its own, playing tricks, joking with friends and strangers I trust. Not the strangers we meet on TV's bounce light, musing on whose beer's better whose to beer's buy, beer? Beer? or what whose car beer? totem tie to wear. Cabezas hablando preguntan. Whose war's as smart as ours? Makeups, the best mask for deception, and a Tai Chi posture of peace can be a pounce in waiting. Some can pretend anything except what's true, although most of us can smell truth. What loves suddenly may be rock taking root, lipstick and a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an argument against risk? Have you not been disdiced and duly distracted by the unexpected razzmatazz? The turquoise blue waterfalls of Havasupai? When I was young, I rode my bike whistling and making up songs, willy nilly lyrics to charm the jacaranda. Tame the passion flower twined around my porch. It's time again to make peace our mantra, make love not war, and celebrate being so gratefully about to be dead, alive, and living it up. So make me divine. Quiero andar siempre contando. Let me find the goddess within this entangled multiverse of flowers and shrooms. <laughs> hey, 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 it's yours now. What do you do? You do one of them, you do another one. What? Why should I do another one? You? Yeah, yeah, do one. Okay, uh, we, we do Mountain Gazette. This is a magazine, it's, it's actually in front of the courthouse. <laughs> and we have a, a poetry section in there now. And uh, it's called uh, Way of the Mountain. And uh, as some of you may know, that was Dolores LaChapelle's name for her uh, path. She called it the Way of the Mountain Path. And uh, we feature a, a poet from the Pacific Northwest this, this week, this month. His name is Michael Daly. And a uh, pretty interesting character. If you've never heard of him, he, uh, he actually was uh, part of a, a, a whole group of Northwest poets. They called the Ish Poets. Robert Sund, uh, you know, they have the Duwamish, uh, Snokomish, all these Ish rivers. So they called it the Ish River Country Poets. And uh, once a year, we actually go to Shy Shy Beats in, on the Olympic Peninsula. And we sort of get together, Tim McNulty, Mike Daly, a bunch of us, and we uh, do poetry where Robert Sun once had a cabin. He had, uh, Robert Sun was an amazing character. He uh, was a poet there in, uh, in, in, uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, he had one of the best short poems I've ever heard of. It's like this. In every good dance, there's a step backwards. <laughs> this one's by Michael Daly called A Poet's Obligation. On the Keystone Ferry, a straw broom and dustpan left near my seat. I pick them up and get to work. <laughs> and this one's called, uh, one of the things I make people do at the, um, 
on the uh, Mountain Gazette is they have to write no more than seven or eight lines. That's my limit. I try to keep people to really uh, say a lot and then I, I hope they have a little bit of a kick because most of the people who read this are adrenaline junkies and they don't want to have long involved poems that some of us love to do. Luminous detail. First light scoops a crystal chip out of the lake. Billows the shape of a small town drift off a burnt stump. If I needed to change my life, that'd be my perch in the glare. The heron high steps, her neck almost bearable, and a hunch shade, she thrusts her beak. I have to look away when she throws open her wild winged spot. All right, uh, it's your turn. You can do a couple now. Uh, here's one from Shakespeare about this time of year. It was a lover and his lass with a hey and a ho and a hey no de no that through the green corn fields did pass in the springtime, the springtime, the only pretty ringtime when birds do sing. Hey ding a ding ding, sweet lovers love the spring. Between the acres of the rye With a hey and a ho and a hey no de no Those pretty country folk would lie In the springtime, the springtime The only pretty ringtime when birds do sing Hey ding a ding ding, sweet lovers love the spring Ooh, yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Shakespeare. Yeah. Um, let's see, here's uh, one that I wrote a few years back. It's a sonnet that I wrote for some of my students when I was teaching at the Colorado College. And they, um, I wanted them to love sonnets the way I loved sonnets, all the iambic pentameter <laughs> of it and all the constraints of it and the rhyme of it. And I thought, what if I use all their language? And the other thing I really wanted them to understand about poetry, what I love about it, one thing, is that it's really about breaking rules. So if you have these <coughs> rules, see what you can do to, to twist them. So one of the biggest rules in poetry is to never use a cliche. So I used only cliches, okay. as many of theirs as I could. It's bummer. Yo, heads up, we're on a crash course down. Keep your eye on the ball. Read between the lines. Think outside the box, because sketchy times are around the corner if you think life sucks now. Supersize it! We're talking a bitchin' snafu! Ain't no chicken soup for the soul gonna alleviate this tight spot between our rock and our hard place. We're in for the dopest world class. Screw up, dude. Don't tell me to chill! I'm for real with this... Beep! <laughs> Don't you get my drift? Sorry, TV. Man, what's up with you? Get dialed! The line has been drawn in the sand. There is so much beep to hit the fan. Game over. Won't be bling blinging no more. That's through. You lose. Say Uncle Sam. That is later, bro. <laughs> 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 and uh, here's one more before I'll turn it back over to Art. This is, a, this is one from when I was a student not too long ago. I took a, a Spanish course here through University Center of the San Miguel. And this poem was called Next Week, Nosotros. The professor d'Espagnol suggests to our class true fluency depends on verbs. Focus, he says, on I and you. Yo soy, tu eres, I am, you are. You must hear, he says, how the verbs lead us into knowing each other. At least, that's what I hear. How soon language slips from lip to desire. Consider the verb querer, I want. You want, yo quiero, tu quieres. He calls this a power verb because all the infinitives follow its lead. Yo quiero bailar. I want to dance with you. Yo quiero to know. And there are seemingly infinite, infinitive ways to say what we know. Saber, conocer, entender, all of them irregular. <laughs> I know, yo sé. I want you, te quiero, want to know you, quiero conocerte, I want you to speak, to hablas with me, conmigo, con mi corazón. I want you to tell me, me dices francamente of your darknesses, your light, 
I'm willing to study. Estudio mucho to be able to conjugate your second person singular view, to be fluent past, present, and future in you. And if I do not understand, no entiendo when you say te amo. Forgive me. What else can lips do? Find a path, un camino a donde I do not care. Sabe, soy extranjera, I am a stranger here con un deseo to learn about you and I and all those verbs waiting to have their way with us. <laughs> yeah, we had a really wonderful time in uh, Carbondale. It was the uh, second annual uh, Carbon Karen Chamberlain Poetry <coughs> Festival. And uh, Karen, I don't know if any of you got to know Karen Chamberlain. She was quite a, a lovely uh, person and uh, a real mentor for many, many, many people. Uh, it, it was funny, uh, we had a fellow drive all the way from uh, Washington State uh, to come and uh, read a poem that uh, uh, Karen helped mentor him on. Uh, and, and, he, and he spoke deeply about how important it was to have somebody who who's reaches out and, and validates what you do. And that uh, Karen did that for so many people. Uh, it was really fitting then that we have a, an event in her name. And uh, uh, this, this weekend was really a, a lovely time. You know, I'm a, one of those poetry junkies. I just love to hear what you <laughs> go on for hours and hours. And, some people may get tired of hearing poetry, but you know, that's something I never do. I love sitting around and hearing other people's single voice speaking out uh, free of any kind of accompaniment, just themselves. Um, here's a little poem from a friend of mine up in Ashland. Her name is Sally Ehrman. Allergens. In classrooms throughout the country, air fresheners are plugged into electrical outlets. They're Flowery fumes are unmistakable as a gas leak. Here, in the teacher's lounge, where I am cutting paper butterflies from random pages, I sniff out the offender next to the copy machine. If anyone wants to know, I'm hiding it in the utility closet behind the cleansers. <laughs> uh, and here's one from a uh, local, Carl Marcus, who uh, he isn't here, but uh, Carl loves to write as well. He's, Car Carl's a very, uh, some of you may know Carl, he's a very interesting fellow, does beautiful f large format photography right now. And his, some of his pieces are really stunning. This is a short little piece called Creation. Fully waxed pearl moon loses its shine. Behind thin white clouds while light <coughs> snow falls, aspen shadows shorten. Mm -hmm. And then I have a little, uh, just a, here's a, a little spraying mantra I love to do. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting uh, piece. Worship, discover, break. Worship the crocus, discover the calf's tongue, break invisible jar. <laughs> Here's a, a couple I wrote this week. This being human. Oh, and you know, I kind of I got off on this song that's been so stuck in my head. Oh, that was its title. The second verse starts like this, and it's the epigraph. A gift for you my heart would bring The sweet release of everything The breath I take before I sing The spaces in between us This being human, this is what we were born for. 
the almost unbearable softness of grass, the sweet perfume of blue weeds in spring, listening to voices that cannot be heard, and reaching for that which can never be held, the popping sound of the daffodil bloom, having our hearts ripped open and again ripped open, ripped open, still beating, the weeping, the salt, the communion of blood, the awkwardness of it all, and the grace, the wanting and the wanting to not want, the roar of the river's brown wings we don't have, the new leafing out of the old, old cottonwood tree and the long walk to the cemetery, not long enough. Oh, this beautiful ache. Ashes, we are not ashes yet. <laughs> Here's one from uh, this weekend, April Fool's Day, Orvis Hot Springs. <laughs> Sitting alone in warm water, with the sun doing what the sun does when given a clear, clear sky. Everything seems possible. Imagine the earth heats this water before it enters the stone pool. <coughs> and this seems miracle enough to make me think that whatever is sacred in this life <coughs> might be very simple. Simple as it is, I don't understand how it works. Just as I do not understand the heart with its longing to love, doesn't it remember the hurt? Doesn't it remember the walls crashing down, the rubble, the wreckage, the stench? Doesn't it remember the long, slow blossoming of ache? How it unfurled that ache like a choked cherry tree in the yard. Tiny buds, tiny buds, tiny buds, larger bloods, then bloom in a riot of bloom. Oh. I recently read about frogs. How if they jump into a pot of boiling water, they will immediately jump out and survive. But if they are put in a pot of cold water and the fire is lit and the temperature increase is slow, then they will stay in the pot, even though it's getting uncomfortable, even though it is more and more hot, and they will stay until they are boiled and dead. Does the heart learn from this? <coughs> Apparently not. Here I am, sitting alone in warm, warm water, the sun burning red, the skin on my chest, and all I can think is how good it feels to be naked, to be warm, to be alive, and to let the heart love, to love despite. Oh, foolish woman, oh, pleasure in being a fool, how it burns. <laughs> <laughs> Lurking off the cliffs, gulls wheel higher and higher, huge waves crash ashore. Wake up, miss, thousands of years old, asleep in the dunes. Coyote shadow, looking for mischief. Loon woman dying, as huge waves crash ashore. Wake up, miss, thousands of years old, asleep in the dunes. Punch drunk rollers took it all away from China. The sand spitting up gray blood. Ranger says three people a year drown on this beach, get dragged under and disappear. East wind howling down the Inverness Ridge rips up hair, rips spray off the heads of ten foot combers, curling it back behind an angry wall of water. The water soaked up, soaking in clam geysers. Sand flea bubbles bursting in the beach. Dunes made to ripple as the sea air surges ashore. The flux inside, huge waves crash from another shore, from another age when mist hung off the cliff. Coyote, lurking in the shadows. Blue woman diving. 
the same huge waves that crashed on Miwok and Pomo, Drake and Sermenio. Come, crash ashore, you mother waves. Soak in, soak deep into the land mass, the land mind, the serpentine locked in the turtle's heart. Bring us back to beginnings, the grinding up of worn shells to make fresh sand. Teach us the seven wave breathing of natural tide. Open us to the sea heart pounding in every green vein. Once again, let coyote lurk in the mists off lupin cliffs. Let loon woman dive into the curling spray to pull up mud of the new from under waves of the old. Pulling up mud of the new world from under waves of the old ways. <laughs> Is there another sonnet? <laughs> Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect love. many moonless nights before I learned to honor the darkness in you. A shadowed place you shrink into, a bruise, a brown plague, racked and starved, a fist clenched tight. Your darkness frightened me. I think it might be my fault. <laughs> Something I forgot to do. Some unkind word that slipped and turned your mood to battered black. And each time I try to reach toward you, your dark would push me back. And standing on the porch last night, the moon was new. So I felt gathered up by dusk, anonymous, unstudied, safe. At last, I understood why you weave mood cocoons. The dark holds us until we're ready to be luminous. Dolphin. Tuna, 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 Great white shark. Halibut and humpy urchins and eels. Hearts alive to see them swimming the sidewalks after school. And freewheeling, fanny and tail and square and anal neck going to grab me. Mama, upstairs in the tenements, the snapping of tin, the breaking of glass, the pump pump, running on a scream in the elevator, as the old men roll over, snore to the light of a blank TV, their breath rancid as sardines. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't talk to me about cruelty and what I'm capable of. <laughs> when I wanted the roaches dead, I wanted them dead. <laughs> I took a broom to their kingdom and I swapped and I sliced without stopping, without ceasing. And I smiled the whole time I was doing it. It was a holocaust of roaches. There were bodies, parts of bodies, blood all over the ground. I did not ask their names. They had no names worth knowing. Now, I watch myself 
when I walk into a room. I never know what I might do. <laughs> <laughs> That was uh, Lucille Clifton. <laughs> <laughs> the great poem. <laughs> uh, I caught this morning, morning's minion, kingdom of daylight's dauphine, dapple, dawn drawn falcon, and his riding of the rolling level underneath him, steady hair, and striding high there, how he rung upon the rein of a wimpling wing in his ecstasy. Then off, off, forth on a swing as a skeet's heel sweeps smooth on a bow bend. The hurl and gliding rebuff the big wind. My heart in hiding stirred for the bird, the achieve of, the mastery of the thing, brute beauty, valor, act, oh, air, pride, plume, air, buckle. And the fire that breaks from me then a billion times told lovelier, more dangerous. Oh, my chevalier, no wonder of it. Sheer plod makes plow down sillion shine, and the blue bleak embers, ah, my dear, fall, call themselves, and gash gold vermilion. Gerard Manley Hopkins, yeah. <laughs> Twas brillig, ah. and the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy where the bora goes, and the moan wraths out grave. Beware the jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jump jump bird, and shun that frumiest bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the minxum foe he sought, and then rested he by the tum tum tree. And he stood a while and thought, and as in offish thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes aflame came whiffling through the toolgy wood, and it burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through the vorpal blade went snicker snick. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Ha oh, ha! Come to my arms, my beamish boy, a frabjous day! Callo! Callay! He chortled in his joy. It was brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. Oh, mimsy were the borogoves and the momras out brave. <laughs> <laughs> Skinning the elk. There's a whole lot of life in these animals. George nods almost like a prayer. As I hold the hoofed leg steady for the knife, mist rising from the gutted belly, skin still warm. Tempered steel peels back thick hide, fur, the dark meat of the interior. Secret organs slide steaming into full moonlight on the bed of green banks, battered pickup. I can't stop peering at the glazed crystal of those antlered eyes, two perfect rivets welded to the girder of that skeletal moment when the bullet's magic cut life short. Later, after the carcass is hung in a cottonwood tree, I go inside to wash my hands, but the blood won't come off. And there's no mistake, I am marked for life. I wear the elk's tattoo as its meat becomes my meat and its blood stains my blood. Spirit leaping from shape to shape. Spirit leaping from shape to shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't give you anything but love, baby That's the one thing I got plenty of, baby Dreaming a while, scheming a while 
you're sure fine. Happiness, and I guess all those things you've always pined for. Gee, it's nice to see you're looking swell. Baby, diamond bracelets, Woolworths doesn't sell, baby. And till the lucky day you know done well, well, baby. I can't give you anything but it is not enough that we love. It is not enough to hold each other when shadows multiply. Misfortunes procreate like jackrabbits in a field. Misery more times more. I walk into your heart. You let me into your gardens of hope where I watch the flowers fail. Sometimes the sun is too much with us. Sometimes rain refuses to come. Sometimes it just isn't enough that we plant a seed, tend it daily, weed, fertilize, pray, the seedling might die anyway, and we may never know why. But if we don't plant gardens, thorns come in. And when we don't grow flowers, we build prisons. It is not enough that we love. And we must love anyway. And when it is time, we must hold each other. And when it is time, we must let go. And when the shadows come, I will not run from your sorrows. I will walk with you as long as you let me. Go with you as far as you go, holding your hand, knowing it isn't enough. And when the rains come, I will dance with you in your puddles. I will dance with you in your dimming light. I will dance with you in these cold, cold rooms, in these prisons that we have built. And listen to me. Be awake. All around us, meteors are falling, fires are escaping their rings, and wanting to help is the secret cup that spills pleasure, purpose, salve, and love, I know is not enough. And love is what we have. I can't give you anything but love, baby. <laughs> so I was going to end with uh, uh, prayer for the great family. I know prayer isn't really very PC. Um, <laughs> I, I tried to get a prayer before our, our commissioner meetings, and I could, my, the other commissioners told me that I couldn't do that. So we did a moment of silence, and that, that was great. But we, we only do it when I'm chair because they don't like it so much. But I do like prayer. I came from a prayer a family. I like to think of prayer as uh, uh, sort of an interior monologue, uh, a dancing with your own mind, a dancing with the world. It's an opportunity to speak and uh, vocalize some of the powerful things around us. And when I hear Rosemary sing and when she speaks of love, and you can feel the energy of that. Um, I just have to give thanks. So let's end with the prayer for the great family by Gary Snyder. Gratitude to Mother Earth sailing through night and day, and to her soils, rich, rare, and sandstone, shale, and serpentine, in our minds and hearts and spirits. So be it. So be it. Gratitude to plants, sun facing, light changing leaf and fine root hairs, sending still through wind and rain, their dances in the flowing spiral grain, in our minds and hearts and spirits, so be it. So be it. You can say that too. <laughs> <laughs> Gratitude to the air, bearing the soaring swift, and the silent owl at dawn, breath of our song, clear spirit breeze, in our minds and hearts and spirits, so be it. So so Gratitude to wild <laughs> beings, our sisters and brothers, who share with us their milk, 
teaching us secrets, freedoms and ways, self-complete, brave, and aware in our minds and hearts and spirits. So be it. So be it. Gratitude to water, clouds, lakes, rivers, glaciers, ski areas, holding or releasing, streaming through all our body salty seas, in our minds and hearts and spirits. So be it. Gratitude to the sun, blinding, pulsing light through trunks of trees, through mists, warming caves where bear and snake sleep. He who wakes us in our minds and hearts and spirits, so be it. Gratitude to the great sky that holds billions of stars, and it goes beyond that, beyond all powers and thoughts and yet is within us. Grandmother Space. The spark is her mate. So be it. Thank you so much. So next month, we have as our feature, uh, Rose, not any longer. Oh. Morse. Rose Morse. Griffin. Griffin, right. Rose Griffin, who many of you may know if you used to drive through the desert and stop at the Bedrock store. That's Rose's store. She's an incredible songwriter, so she'll be our feature next month. And we'll have another open mic. Wouldn't it be great if you brought something to read? It doesn't <laughs> have to be your own. Bring anything. You can bring, bring some anything. Bring <coughs> anybody's anything to read. Audrey and Rich, who just passed away, yeah. a wonderful poet. You should bring some of her work. Debbie, you want to say something about what's happening next? Sure. Hopefully around 7.30ish we'll start up. Uh, we're waiting for the author and the subject to show up from Orvis. Uh, <laughs> you know how that goes. That um, may take a while. Yeah, no, they've been there for most of the afternoon. Um, it's uh, author Mark Sundin, who has roots in Tell Your Eye. Um, he also wrote a book in 2005 called The Car Camping, if anyone remembers that one, um, with stories from Tell Your Eye as well. Um, and then the subject, Daniel Suelo, who in 2000, put the last 30 bucks in his pocket in a phone booth and walked away and was not used, bartered, trade, given, touched money in 12 years. Wow. He's 50 years old and lives in a cave in Moab, uh, or around Moab. Uh, he's very social, um, and they're here to talk about Mark's book. And mark my words, this, this book is going to start, you're going to start seeing these two around a lot yes. um, nationally, I think. This is a really interesting topic. It's not just about the money. Goes off on tangents, spirituality, theology. Uh, it's unbelievable. What a fun ride to read. Who has anyone read it yet? That should be around 7:30 tonight. 7:30 here, of course, right? Right here. Right. We'll, we'll read set up, and then hopefully afterwards. Um, uh, no pun intended, but we will go maybe up to the last dollar for a. <laughs> That is kind of funny. It is. <laughs> Ironic. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Does anybody, some people came in late. Did anybody bring something to share? Anyone? I feel like jumping up before we. I um, came from the book. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, we'll end then with some Hafez and I'll, I'll help you learn it. It's a very sweet, short little poem. <laughs> and here's how it goes. I'll recite it once and then you can just repeat with me and we'll, we'll put it on together. This sky where we live is no place to lose your wings. So love, love, love. Ready? Repeat after me. This sky, sky where we live, live. This sky, sky where we live is no place to lose your wings. Is no place to lose your wings. So love, love, love. So love, love, love. This sky where we live. Is no place to lose your wings. So love, love, love. So love, love. Oh yeah! One more time. This sky where we live. Let's do it all together. One, two, three. This sky where we live is no place to lose your wings. So love, love. That poem, incidentally, is translated by Daniel Ladinsky, and he will be here. We'll be reading together at the Compassion Festival in June, and then uh, doing workshops and reading together in Grand Junction in July. No, they're both in July. Mm -hmm. It's all in July. The whole of it. In July. July. We'll see you next month with Rose Griffin. Bring something to read. Or just bring yourself. Nice to have you all here. Thank you. Thank you.